Hey, golfers, and welcome back to another episode of the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. Um, today, we've got a f- fun special guest, first time on the show, um, and long time ago on the YouTube channel, frequently. Um, now One returning. of the OGs, I That's think, right. One of the OGs. I've been referred uh, around these parts. Yeah, yeah. We sh- you know what? i got to bring that. i got to call you that more often, I think, the, the YouTube OG. Uh, James Tracy. James has been a club fitter with Second Swing well, longer than I've been here. This would be ni- uh, coming up on nine years. Yep, nine years now. So... Uh, you were initially at Minnetonka, right? And yes. And then now have transitioned to sort of the online fitting role. We'll get Got into it. that as well. Um, but, James, first of all, uh, we, I'm going to get you started with kind of a fun one here. Um, okay. Talk a little bit about the clubs in your bag. Specifically, I, kind of, I want you to call out one that might surprise some of the viewers or listeners. Oh, man. I might embarrass my entire family. <laughs> I, I think everyone is surprised at all 14 clubs in my bag. Okay. So I'd, I'd, Having a hard time picking where to start. Yeah, I'm one of those rare uh, breeds who swings really hard, mm-hmm. but needs lots of forgiveness. <laughs> so you have kind of some odd combinations. Last, remember when Mickelson did like the two drivers? I do. Yeah. So I have uh, I have a two chipper setup. Okay. I was messing around with last season. Um, that was a failed experiment. <laughs> um, I've been messing around with a nine wood, ninety five X. Uh, hit, hit some really fun shots with that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, as a fitter, you you kind of part of your goal is to experiment and try new things. Yeah. Um, I also am not getting ready for the tour anytime soon. No. Yeah. I mean. So for me, sometimes when I show up, I'm kind of trying to surprise the guys in my group. Sure. They kind of know that I'm going to have some funky Frankenstein experiment in there. Yeah. Um. That being said, though, I think I will be heading into this season a little less um, all over the map and okay. a little bit more set. I think one, I don't know if other fitters have given given a similar answer before, but we tend to really struggle to fit ourselves. Yeah, no, um, that's I've I've heard very similar things from other fitters. You kind of overthink it a little bit. Yeah, I think this year I've listened to my uh, colleagues and probably I'm making better choices. So I'm hoping that has a good impact. <laughs> um, well, good. I have heard so, tales about some of the things that you've, you've played with before. Yeah, I'm Mr. Um, I got, I got an X100 yeah. and a two wood yeah. right now. That, that <laughs> yeah. tends to be kind of a fun club for me. So maybe that one's probably the one right now, if I game this weekend, probably be the most yeah, surprising see, I, one. Yeah. I can't imagine anybody watching or listening to this has heard of that combination before. Yeah, I mean, everybody on tour used to, I mean, it wasn't like that long well, ago when everybody recently, played steel. Yeah. It so be, it's yeah. weird now. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I kind of embrace the weird a little yeah, bit. So I like that. I'm I good like with that. that. I'm good. Uh, with that. That's good. Uh, you know, it, everybody's got their own quirky thing. I mean, we 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 have we talk to Kevin Kraft a lot, and you yep. know, he's got a new putter every time we talk to him mm-hmm. in the bag. So mm-hmm. uh, that's 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 kind of his staple uh, yeah. of quirkiness, if you will, in the bag. So yeah. I think it's important to play clubs that help you get better, but you also want to play equipment that you enjoy playing with. Yeah. Um, and you want equipment that excites you. You want to understand why the features and benefits help you, but you also want to be excited to hold the club and hit the shots mm-hmm. that you like, even if it might not be, you know, what conventional wisdom would tell you. So I think that's what's fun being just club dorks is just looking for um, kind of that excitement when you get to go play yeah. with something new. Um, and, you know, it helps us empathize with golfers who are buying – and trading and trying new clubs all the time. You know, we yeah. get the same level of excitement too. So, and speaking of new things, yeah, I mean, this good is early in. Yeah, I, thank you. This, You're getting been, good at this. I'm getting it's episode thirty six. I'm kind of getting the hang of this whole podcast thing Love now. It. It's good. Uh, it's what March now of twenty twenty four. So there's the last couple of months have been pretty exciting for us in the sense that new products from, you know, the I guess our our top manufacturers out there. Um, I got to ask you in well, – it's kind of be twofold here. I'll start with customer feedback that you've gotten, mm-hmm. um, you know, through your online appointments and fittings. Um, is there a club or, or clubs that have received sort of the, the best praise and feedback so far? Yeah, great question. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot that come to mind right away. I mean, I think, you know, drivers tend to always elicit the most feedback. Mm-hmm. You know, it's – the most polarizing club it's got the biggest misses it's got the most exciting wins so feedback around drivers is always pretty 
pertinent. Um, you know, I think every golf manufacturer tries to make drivers that go further and are more forgiving. And that's, you kind of hear that recycled oh, yeah. a lot, but I will say like the 10 K and obviously QI 10, lots of MOI, um, you know, these are drivers that are incredibly straight, mm-hmm. but they're not the shortest drivers either. And usually you paid a penalty for MOI. You, you saw more spin or you mm-hmm. wouldn't see as much ball speed or, you know, wouldn't win on the launch monitor in terms of the tiles, but you right. might see the best dispersion. Well, that those days are kind of coming to an end. Um, you know, even around the office, there is a lot of what I would consider to be golfers that don't tend to be gravitating towards the most forgiving driver yeah. that are now putting that in play and are feeling like they're driving it better than ever. So I think because they're a little bit lower spinning, they're appealing to a wider audience. I mean, who wouldn't want to put it in play? So yeah. so 10K and QI10 uh, for sure on the driver side. And then, you know, most recently, you know, anytime there's a new Vokey, you know, you're going to get some yeah. buzz. You know, I customer feedback is they're just excited. Mm-hmm. I have not a lot of on-course feedback yet um and it's early in our season yeah. too so um but yeah drivers and sm10 feedback just you know <laughs> right how long are they going to take when when do i get them what grinds do i go with you know that's mm-hmm. a lot of feedback right now on that one yeah i think it's it's fascinating that the conversation about how you know from the from the oems and the manufacturers about the drivers is gone from here's all this ball speed we're giving you all this ball speed now it's all about the forgiveness and yeah. the moi and here's when you miss hit the face or on the face on the heel or on the toe, mm-hmm. this is what's going to happen. Um, that conversation shifted pretty quickly in the last couple of years. Yep. Um, but they've delivered on it, and I mean, there's, I'm I'm with you in what I've heard and seen on the 10K. That's also may or may not be coming for my own bag in the next couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, very excited about that. It's it is truly like you you miss hit that off the center of the face and you get. Uh, a, a shockingly straight ball flight that you probably wouldn't have with a previous model. Yeah, I think that's one thing that sometimes gets missed in the fitting process is you're, you're looking at, you know, the launch monitor data. It's what's happening at impact. And, you know, yes, there's total distance and peak height, but, you know, a lot of times you're, you're not thinking about what happens downrange, especially mm-hmm. on, like, a wide sample. But I've heard more people celebrating how good their misses were even on like a fitting you know like one of uh, the guys in the office was doing a fitting and he's like i i hit it terribly but my numbers were great you know usually it's the other way around usually it's, you're talking about the best hits or the yeah. one you hit the best but i mean they, there's more excitement around like oh man i i can hit this anywhere on the face and it yeah. goes really well and, and so i think that's that's an, that's a, an inspiring change and i think the USGA's, you know, the, you know, core testing originally, now the CT test. I mean, it's kind of hard to pack a lot more ball speed in these things, you know. So right, you, you basically you have to, can't, yeah. Yeah, you have, you know, MOI and and optimizing launch and spin and adjustability and um, forgiveness off center. I mean, those are all things that mm-hmm. really, you know, future designs will continue to try to improve on. So it does make sense that the industry is kind of pivoting a little bit there. Yeah, yeah, and you did mention, so you mentioned kind of three, well, you know, obviously the the G430 Max 10K, that's a fitter's choice driver. You mm-hmm. mentioned sure. QI10 and QI10 Max there mm-hmm. in the driver category. Fitter's choice again, and then the wedges as well, the Vokey SM10s. Mm-hmm. Um, more fitter's choice there. That's kind of our our cool initiative this year to sort of yeah. highlight the, um, the products that have really wowed the fitters um, in the bays. And so mm-hmm. uh, I know if you ask different fitters, you're going to get maybe slightly different answers. But uh, by and large, you know, you know, if you go to Fitters Choice on the Second Swing website, you're going to see the products that are wowing yeah. the fitters the most. And so those are three of them right there. So, yeah, well, that's always helped us, you know, for online, you know, because obviously we we rely on the data from our in person fittings yeah. to get a feel for what's working. Um, you know, as a fitting collective, you know, we have always had our own organic Fitters Choice. We know what combos are working, you know, which head shaft combo is yeah. go to for this player. Uh, what surprises are out there, um, you know, who are fitting into, you know, this category. Um, so it's really cool to see golfers being able to be empowered by kind yeah. of what we're deciding on. Um, and and that's going to keep changing. I mean, you know, it, 
there's early indicators. There's kind of what we what we see when we test. Um, you know, some of our stores. I mean, obviously, we're in a northern market. It's, yeah. It hasn't been super cold. Uh, right. Knock on wood. But you know, sometimes we don't even know how well these clubs are doing until a little bit later in the season. So you know, it's gonna be fun to see how that fitter's choice continues to evolve. And um, um, yeah, especially there'll be there will be you know more products. I'm sure that come. Yeah, to the market down down the road here in 2024, and so that will sure. maybe change things up, mix things up. But um, yeah. I, it's it's cool. It's cool now that too. You know, it's if for the for the person that might not have time for the fitting or might just need to quick pick something up before a trip, they can go to Fitters Choice. Say, okay, here's the recommendations from the Second Swing Fitting Team. So yeah, um, you mentioned the online fitting that mm-hmm. that you do, um, and so that's kind of what I wanted to get to for for the the gist of the conversation today of because yeah. you know I think we. Sometimes even to a fault. I mean, we we certainly push, and rightfully so, I think. Our, our in-store fittings are awesome. Uh, it's a great experience. You get that personalized tour van feel. Um, it really is a tour-level fitting. Um, but we kind of maybe need to push more, um, more than we do anyway already, sort of the online fitting process that we offer as well. So yeah. um, I kind of just want you to explain to people that don't know about it or maybe have heard about it but don't exactly know what mm-hmm. it all entails, what the online fitting process of Second Swing is. Mm-hmm. Well, it's kind of a mystery. So, I mean, I think it's it's something that, you know, at the kind of peak of COVID became kind of a, a must-have for g- golf companies. Yeah. You know, folks weren't able to, you know, find a, a fitter in store, and we saw an, an opportunity to try to take what we've created in our stores, which is an amazing experience that helps golfers you know make better equipment decisions learn about equipment improve their game i mean you name it you know we're really proud of that um i'm sure folks that are listening watching aren't in driving distance with the store so you know yeah they're kind of sol so you know for us it was kind of exciting to say well how can we offer that experience to literally any golfer Mm -hmm. um and um help reach some of those same desired results, even if you can't jump in one of our hitting bays. And so for us, you know, uh, and I can speak personally, initially it was very challenging to even consider how you would virtually fit. Uh, I'm a very data driven numbers freak. I love the data. If TrackMan went to 640 tiles, of data points, right, I right. would find a way to <laughs> to use them. Uh, I love that. Um, I like the mechanics of it. So when you strip that away from the conversation, um, I think it's it's totally uh, understandable to feel like, well, how do you know? How 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 can it be valuable? You don't right. So what's liberating as a fitter? when you don't have to rely on the data, you don't need to study the data, is you can just look at the problem simply. You know, you just, you're forced to listen. You're Mm -hmm. forced to have a conversation uh, as opposed to just being excited to see someone hit and and react and and use the data to drive your decisions. Now it's it's really just getting to the fundamental issue. You want, Mm -hmm. you, you hear more about how the golfer describes their ball flight, not, looking for their data, but like, talk to me about what you see. Talk to me about what you feel. What have you played? What have you liked? Mm-hmm. You know, or, you know, and so when you start to ask all those questions and we have all of the data, we know what these clubs do. We know how shaft changes and lie angle changes and swing weight and over. We know what can happen. So you start using this algorithm that all fitters just learn yeah. to have, uh, you know, inside their head. And now you can just speak very plainly. So I've found that online fitting, virtual fitting, is a much easier way to connect with the golfer because you can go right to the root issue and you can have 100% confidence that the club you're recommending and the way that it's engineered and the way that it's designed and the way that it's performed is going to be better than what they've already been playing. Because it's black and white. There's no gray area. Right. There's no reliance on them putting a good swing on it or having a good sample size or being on or off that day. It's just purely like matchmaking. Mm-hmm. You know, you this is a good fit. You guys are compatible. You should try this. Um, and 
you know, I, I've really enjoyed that challenge. Um, yeah, it's, so, it's a unique, uh, it's certainly a different look at club fitting. Mm -hmm. um, because, like you said, I mean, there are there are moments, there are times in, in the face-to-face -face fittings where someone might swing a particular club on those five to ten swings um, not so well as maybe the club they yeah. just swung or the one they're going to swing next. And there's that that's taken into account in the fittings. And, you know, and sometimes that can be related to maybe they didn't like the way the club looked or mm -hmm. it felt weird or, you know, but with the virtual fitting, it... it it really is just a conversation, right? You're just talking to the player. Here's the here's my prop. Here's why. Here's my miss. I miss to the right every time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hitting my seven iron twenty yards shorter than I want to. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you you kind of are able to get right to the root of it, and from there, you based on all the uh, physics aspects of of golf clubs, you kind of know already yeah. in your brain right away in the first couple of questions that you ask, you kind of know where you're going. Well, I think too, it's I mean. It's not without data. You just have to mine the data differently. I mean, track man's a luxury. You know, you hit a shot, you get all the data right. you want. So we have to work a lot harder to, to like I said, mine that data out of the player. And a lot of times you can kind of get to the same result, you know, just learning about how, you know, uh, you know, does their mist change from their woods to their irons? What's their divot pattern like? You know, have they been fit before? You know what are the specs of what they're playing? Do they see, uh, you know, do they have one favorite club in their bag that's considerably different than the rest of the clubs in the bag? And what are those differences? And you know, so really, um, you know, the problem solving, which is the fun part of fitting, I think, is just you know yeah. taking this problem and trying to figure out how to how to come up with a solution. Um, you know, and on the data side, you know, we, I mean, there's lots of golfers that have the data you know they've been in fittings before they have stat tracking apps they maybe if they've gone on a fitting in person and yeah um you know they just want a second opinion you know so we we you know we're, we're not um always just um making assumptions um without any concrete evidence you know we're, we're able to um you know really pull that uh, the answers out of golfers. I mean, it does require a lot of honesty. You know, that, that yeah. is one fun part. And I think an important part of our online fitting process is, you know, you really are relying on the golfer's uh, honesty where sometimes launch monitor m humbles you. And, and that's the truth, you know, oh, yeah. this is what I, happens. I mean, and the conversations um, I have with some of the in-store fitters about yeah. the players that, yeah, you know, they come in. Yeah, I, I drive the ball about two seventy five, and yeah. then yeah. not so much on the yeah. on the track man. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. so you gotta, you know, you, you know, there's ways to massage that. Um, you know, and and also, you know, we also realize that, um, you know, in a fitting scenario, you're you're only gonna get as much help from the fitter um, as honest and as truthful about what your goals and your ambitions are. You know, if you come in there feeling egotistical and you want to uh, be braggadocious or you want to, uh, you're, you're, you're challenging uh, yourself to kind of pretend that, you know, maybe this is the player I want to be or I feel like yeah. this fitter needs to think I'm better than what I am in order to fit me properly. That's not doing you any good. So, right. so we do give every golfer the benefit of the doubt. You know, I let them know right up front, hey, you know, I'm going to need your full, full honesty, brutal honesty. The only yeah. way I'm going to help you is if you help me, you know. Yeah, you're going to get and, more out of this if you're and, brutally uh, honest with your game. Right. And and it's a lot of the stuff you, you dig up in a, in a fitting conversation, I mean, if I'm pouring into your, your, your highs and lows and why you're playing certain equipment and what you, it's, it's things you don't always think about. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's things you avoid thinking about. I mean, a lot of better... A lot of good players forget the bad swings. You know, you, you don't want to talk about your miss hits. You don't want to focus on the negatives. And um, or you might be someone like me who focuses so, on the negatives and forgets about the positives. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that 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 that's an issue clubs won't always solve, Drew. But um, <laughs> but no, I think um, I I will say that um, the engagement that we have seen with golfers, whether it's virtual chat, video chat, over the phone, helping them solve the same problems you would head into our uh, retail stores and, and try to solve in the hitting bay. It is enlightening. It's fun. 
you there's an as a bond instant bond there yeah we're both both sides of the conversation are extremely passionate and empathetic because we I was just telling you about all my I mean there's why do you think I have two chippers in my bag here? it's not because <laughs> I'm excellent with chipping um you know I struggle too you know so I think when golfers realize that okay hey this uh this fitter is gonna just is taking time out of the day just to listen and just have a conversation and like legitimately just talk back yeah. and forth there is a really great bond that's formed there and the the results can be really tremendous mm-hmm. and you know if anything it just makes you a better buyer and a better golfer moving forward because you now um, you're less focused on hitting shots and 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 being perfect and your swing you're, all you're doing is just you're just open to learning like I want to listen to what the figure yeah. says I want to be more present in the conversation and I think sometimes when you're fit in person there's so much data there's so many swings you're running around sometimes you miss some of the value that the fitters bring just because you can't take away 100 percent of what the fitter says I think in the online virtual setting you know you're on your couch you're relaxed yeah. you know you're 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 not hitting shots you're you're listening boy there's really a lot of value in that so. yeah it's uh it's cool what you guys have have done I know there's a you know there's there is a method to the madness of it I know mm-hmm. there's you know there's important questions that you guys ask in every uh, you know conversation you have with a golfer um, mm-hmm. and you get those key answers provided the golfers are honest about those answers mm-hmm. uh, and typically they are yeah. uh, you mentioned some of the data that you guys are kind of sifting through to sort of get to um, some of the conclusions you might draw um, yeah. so we've talked about trackman um, but I know there's some other things that you guys use too. Um, so can you kind of go over some of those resources for data? You know, I know there's some new technologies out there from say Titleist and Ping and mm-hmm. others that I know you guys have been using those, those softwares, those applications a lot to get to, mm-hmm. you know, the right club for golfers. Yeah. I mean, what's nice is, you know, because we're virtual, we're a lot, anything that's web-based, um, you know, we, we have going, I mean, our we got multiple monitors. Yeah, you know it's kind of like a, a you know reminds me of a, a, um, I'm thinking of like a, a NASA movie, you know, uh, Ground Zero. Mm-hmm. Um, you're in the control room. Right. You got all your screens up. You got all your da- data analysts, and you know we're pouring through all these things um, in the background because we're trying to find ways to narrow down all the selections. So we leverage lots of tools to help. Um, you know we we. We look for opportunities to um, identify if golfers are using similar tools as well, like I mentioned before. You know, um, and if not, we, we we plant some seeds. Hey, you know, just keep track of on your scorecard. You know, you got a lot. You know, if you're keeping your own score, you got a lot of extra rows there. Right. Keep track of how many fairways you miss left. Put an L. If you miss a fairway right, put an R. Play five rounds. Call us back. You know, let's see what the let's math it out. Let's see what the percentages are. You know, was I how about with your irons? How many putts? You know, so we can, you can get to that data, even if you don't have a really specific high end technology. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're right. A lot of the um, our partners in the industry are coming out with some really great um, tools that can help us fit someone yeah. when we're not in the same room. And we're constantly looking for ways to continue to, um, you know, enhance that experience. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been cool. I've gotten to know a little bit about those technologies, and it's actually kind of fascinating how dialed in really they can uh, they can get mm-hmm. somebody on on some of that stuff. So, yep. is there is there a difference for the appointments that you guys have the um, for new versus used, or is it the same process? What's that like for you? Yeah, guys? I mean, for us, I mean, we. It's a little bit different only because, you know, we're not reliant on the inventory or your swings. So really it's it's kind of a, a very open conversation, you know, 30-minute appointment. If we're going to walk through multiple club types and, or walk through your bag, we'll add another half an hour, you know, however much time that you need. Um, and, you know, from a process standpoint, I mean, whether you're looking at a brand new – uh, 10k driver or you're looking at the you know uh, g400 yeah or you're looking at a r1 from tailor-made because that's what fits your budget you know because you're playing an old g2 from ping you know it, the process doesn't really change 
you know, the fundamentals of the golf club and how you look at the head technology, how you look at loft, how you look at shaft, yeah. how you look at length, how you look at grip, how you look at all the variables, those things span the generations of equipment. Um, so, you know, for us at the store level, um, yeah, we do differentiate between new and used and tour van because of the, the time commitment, the environment. Mm-hmm. Um, but online, we're, we're open. I mean, we, we're having conversations on the new stuff. We're having conversations on the old stuff um, and everything in between. Yeah, and it's not, a, it's not really a priority level either, I imagine, of like, you know, it's just whenever someone calls in or whenever someone schedules that appointment, they're going to get what they need, whether they need a brand new driver or they need, you know, a, yeah. a new, or they want an upgrade of putter, but they have a budget of 120 bucks, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's, a, that's another cool part as well mm-hmm. is that it's whatever you need is what yeah. you're going to get in the online fitting department at Second Swing. Um, and we're picky with that. I mean, it's it's a daunting task because, you. I mean, we have hundreds of thousands of different options on the website dating, spanning the decades, multiple brands. I mean, you need to know your stuff. Right. So to, to, to do what we do, I mean, that's why we don't just throw anybody into the fire because you have to be prepared to either recall the information from – you know, you, you don't even, you have no idea what, what's coming your way each day. Um, you also need to be able to look up and find information quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, cause you know, as, as good as our memories are, we don't have every single, uh, club spec memorized. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you have to be able to be able to compare lots of things simultaneously. And, and that's what sometimes is nice about having access to all these different tools and databases and, um, kind of all the history of equipment yeah. and what it does. Um, so we can kind of reference it and, and organize in a way so we can have those conversations effectively. And you mentioned the idea also of having multiple conversations with players. Like yeah, um, you mentioned, you know, go out and play five rounds and then get back to me. And so is that – how often does that happen for one? And Lots. two, maybe mention the, like, the idea of the 30-day play guarantee and how mm-hmm. that kind of work into that and where it's not just one fitting session or one – conversation that you have but it's a sort of a work in progress for yeah weeks uh maybe months before finding the the 100 the right the right club combination yeah it's a journey you know if you want to get better you got to keep working at it um and and our team is way more accessible than say an in-store fitter in some ways because you can talk to us anytime you can talk to us from your phone right you can be sitting in your car you can be sitting on your couch um and you can chat or call. And so we see a lot more of that repeat conversation. You know, our store uh, fitters, thank God they're fully booked. And, you know, yeah. you have to make an appointment and you have to drive and go see them. And, they're, you know, yes, I'm sure there's lots of our fitters that have great relationships with the golfers they work with. But, you know, for our team, like, we're, we're live. We're right here. You know, we're – so we have – there's lots of regulars mm-hmm. that, you know – Maybe after almost every round, hey, here's the feedback. Send yeah. me this. Here's here's what it did. Here's what I did on hole seven. Here's what I did on hole eleven. You know, they're walking us through it. So I think that is a fun and a vital part of the virtual experience. Drew is, is is sometimes that data that you might be missing, and that subjective feeling of touching and feeling the club and comparing it. Like we need the golfers' feedback after we've made a recommendation diagnosis. You know, we, we, we need that feedback yeah. to come back, and we want that follow-up. You mentioned our play guarantee. That's what's great. Um, you know, we have a super friendly return policy on used, and we're one of the few companies that offers you the ability to return new and even new custom equipment. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, even, anytime you need to take a mulligan because something just didn't work, you know, hey, that's data. Right. Now, we, now that eliminates a ton of options. And, okay, cool, now we know what plan B is. You know, and that gives us even more confidence instead of feeling like, oh, we failed or we made a bad recommendation yeah. or or that didn't work. It's kind of more like, oh, perfect. Okay, now I'm even more confident yeah. because now I know I'm even more confident in the next pick. So right. um, so we really strongly encourage that continued follow-up. We also know that, you know, when you're purchasing and, and investing in your bag, especially online, you know, it's not a, you know, all at one-stop shop. I mean, people who are... Uh, surfing the web or investing in their bag, I mean, it's a journey. Not everybody's going to re-up their whole bag every season. Um, 
sometimes it takes months, years to pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. And so even if we're just inching you along on that journey, um, because we're, you know, we're, we're in the business just having conversations and being helpful. We're not incentivized by anything other than just to create a good experience. Right. There's no pressure. And I think that's what makes the virtual fittings really fun. It's just an enjoyable. Right. You're just talking with another gearhead, which is, that's, which is it, fun. That's what it is. It's, it's kind of yeah. cool because even in, like, the office here, like, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll chat briefly about, about something or, mm -hmm. it, you know, I'm, you know, with any of the team members here, it's a bunch of club junkies just. Yeah learning about or reacting to or sharing their own experiences but i just oh i just played the new irons i love them i'm hitting them way better you know um and it's now you're just doing that with people outside of second swing but they're still trying to get better just like we are yeah. um so that's kind of the cool part is you, that's that's essentially yeah. what you guys are doing it's yeah. just making sure that experience is top notch and yeah. there's a reason why you know the google ratings are as high as they are i guess yeah. um so lastly, kind of starting to wrap up here, but I wanted to, let's say, you know, because I think there's still maybe a perception out there, you know, online fitting, what exactly does that mean? Um, mm -hmm. If I'm going to get fit for clubs, shouldn't I go to the store, swing mm -hmm. them, hit them? Mm -hmm. But if there's someone, you know, still maybe hesitant about it or still not totally, I guess, bought into the idea, what mm -hmm. would you maybe share with them here as, yeah. we, as we start to wrap? Well, obviously if you have the opportunity to go and test clubs in an environment that you're comfortable in and you're getting good service, whether it's from Second Swing or elsewhere, we, we would never discourage that. There's nothing more fun than trying clubs and yeah. experimenting. So I want to just say that, you know, yeah. it, this is a compliment to that. Um, you know, I do know that golfers, when you go in and you go through fitting and you've been through fittings, Drew, I mm -hmm. mean, you've had clubs that you've tested that didn't give you great numbers. Did it mean that that club was not right for you? Did it mean it was a terrible fit? No, not necessarily. Just the data wasn't there. Mm -hmm. You didn't like it, you, you know. So, but it doesn't mean that it wasn't worth testing. So for us, you know, sometimes in a club fitting, you may dismiss a club quickly um, because after four or five hits, it didn't it didn't go your way. For us, we're not dismissing those options. You know, we're we're looking at a blank slate. And the more we talk, the more we learn, the more data we get from the online golfers that go and play and give us feedback, the more data we get from our in-store fittings, all the shots that we collect as a company, the, the easier and the more predictive things are. But at the end of the day, it's, it's still a relationship between mm -hmm. you and the club, right? No fitter has the answer. There's no way to unequivocally know this is exactly the best option, right? It's all about building trust and, 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 and believing that I can play better golf with this option and I kind of know why I like this and I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna mm -hmm. hit it better. I mean, it's a mental thing. Yeah. Um, so if, if you feel like you're not ready to make a purchase or make an upgrade – it's only because you haven't gained trust in something different. Right. And so our goal is to try to help you gain trust in whatever that is. Yeah. And I think there's just as much of a chance of you gaining trust, you know, talking with someone and hearing them talk about products, listen to your, uh, your problems, your opportunities, right. and provide you their unsolicited unabided recommendations, you're going to start to gain trust and feel like I'm armed with more, um, just more power to get better. Yeah. And I think that's the, that, that should be your motivation mm -hmm. to give a virtual fitting a try. Yeah. Um, to get and a sometimes opinion. that, that trust and it might be a re regained trust in something they already have. It could be, um, line angle change or a length change that's all needed to, regain trust in something they already have instead of spending a ton of money on something brand new. So there's exactly. the budgetary concerns um, mm -hmm. as well that I know are taken into effect. Mm -hmm. So um, lastly, this has been awesome, by the way, um, yeah. education into the, the online fitting, the virtual fittings available at Second Swing. So um, for viewers and listeners that are um, watching this, listening to this, how can they learn more or perhaps schedule an appointment for an online or virtual fitting? Yeah, well, it's really easy. I mean, you really don't need an appointment at all, truthfully. You know, we're available 
on every single web page on secondswing.com. There's a little icon on the bottom right to chat with us. And 99 times of 100, one of our fitters are going to be right there just yep. waiting to help you on whatever page you're on or just to start a conversation. Um, so folks that maybe don't have time for a phone call, you can chat us all day long. Um, you know, the, I'm sure we'll put the number on the screen. Or, mm-hmm. um, But, you know, our, our fitters are available. You know, walk in, no appointment necessary. Call us. We're available. Um, and then if you want to schedule time, have your favorite drink, have your bag next to you. There you go. Have a golf channel on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, have our YouTube channel playing in the background. Whatever kind of puts you in the right mood, you can schedule kind of that one-on-one time Yeah. Uh, if you want to just kind of be present for it. So you have all of those options. But, um, you know, we want to be as available as humanly possible for everyone. I like that. I like that. That's a... Yeah, that's a great way to wrap it. I, now I think I might schedule one for myself, the way what? you put that, to get Let's the drink chat, and the Drew. clubs and yeah, everything. Yeah, just not in the office, Drew. Yeah, yeah, I suppose, yeah. I'll have to take outside hours for that. But, Good deal. Uh, James, thank you for spending the time with us. Golfers, make sure you go, um, well, you can find us on the chat online. The fun part about the chat is that there is someone there, like a real person yeah, responding to that every real. time. So go to secondscreen.com, engage in the chat. Otherwise, like James said, you can schedule that appointment as well um, and get yourself dialed in for 2024. Uh Thank you again, James. This was awesome. Thanks, Drew.